So it has been quite some time since we talked about James Charles, and actually just about two years since he had his major scandal, where this boy had come forward and said that James had sent him inappropriate messages and pictures when he was only 16 and James was in his early 20s. After this, over 15 people came forward, some with more legit looking similar stories about James, and others who seemed like they were completely faking online interactions with him for clout. In the end, it turns into a he said, he said, where James claimed the guy lied about his age, and the guy claimed that James knew the entire time. Overall, he did not face any sort of legal repercussions for this, but rightfully so, his reputation, his career, and his bank account all took a major hit. It was like he was in first place racing to the finish line, and the blue shell of social justice came in to fuck up his whole day. More recently, there were also guys who were of legal age, who claimed that they were straight, and said that James was trying to coerce them into changing their sexuality. I did find that story to be ridiculous that a quote-unquote straight man would entertain flirty messages from an obviously gay man for months on end, but I digress. At least it did provide us with his hilarious list of boyfriend requirements. So James says, It's a really lucrative role. It's called my boyfriend. Requirements? 6'2 plus. Must love escape rooms, horror movies, and cuddling. Sounds awful. He said this guy has to have a big old dick, armpit hair. It's very simple to you. are a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> Either way, I bring James up today because he has finally released a tell-all interview about the latter story with the 16-year-olds. And today we're going to be reading through this article. So as you guys can see by the title there, James Charles would like to be uncancelled, please. It is the year of our internet 2023, and as surely as the sun rises, an internet celebrity has an apology to make. So here I am, sitting in James Charles Encino mansion like a pop culture priest, ready to take his confession. I mean, I do have to say there just right off the bat, the choice of words that the writer used there, pop culture priest, seem a little bit peculiar to me, given the subject of this whole interview. I mean, we all know what priests are known for, they get a little bit lonely, they start looking at those altar boys a little bit strange. So yeah, just the choice of words there, not very good. To start the interview, James says, I don't want to sit here and f***ing mope and whine and cry because nobody wants to hear it. I had to do a lot of thinking like, okay babe, this is your fault. No you're not a p no, no you're not a f***ing gr no you're not a predator, but you made a big mistake. I mean, if you're even having to say that to yourself in your head, it's safe to say that you've already messed up in a major way. Like, these are probably the same thoughts that EDP was having. And then apparently this is some sort of photo James took during the interview. He's got the boom mic there, he's doing his makeup. At this point, you're likely familiar with the specific quid pro quo inherent in celebrity profiles like this. The ones that come together post-cancellation after a respectable amount of time has passed post-cancellable sin. It's no surprise that the star's willingness to answer intimate questions about a catastrophic stretch of their lives increases dramatically when they have a project to promote. So I guess she's saying that he's doing this interview at this point because he has some sort of big makeup release. In today's case, it's Charles' new makeup line, Painted. But it's also Charles himself, a warrior, acceptably contrite, but still just a little extra Charles. What is this? Is she trying to look smart to her English teacher? This very interview is to be a trial balloon. It's reception, the answer to the question both of us, and maybe you too, if what auto-populates in Google search can be believed, are here to ask. Is James Charles still cancelled? I mean, he's obviously not cancelled. He still gets hundreds of thousands of views on his YouTube video. He never went to jail for his wrongdoings. And he's out here in an Encino mansion. After all, would a still ousted person be allowed to pose for red carpet cameras at the People's Choice Awards? Or chat amiably with the paparazzi while out and about in Hollywood? I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty clear at this point that there's a lot of still very powerful people walking around Hollywood, walking around these red carpets, that people publicly know have done some disgusting, creepy things. So I wouldn't say it's like out of the question. Would a still banished person have hundreds of thousands of fans enthusiastically engage with his YouTube beauty tutorials? Well yeah, I'm sure he would. A large majority of his audience is kids who don't know any better. Would a truly exiled person be 24 years old and living in a reportedly $7 million farmhouse? I mean yeah, once again, being rich and being a bad person can be very synonymous. Painted, a solo venture four years in the making, launches in just a few weeks. I imagine this is some sort 
Dakota new makeup palette that James is coming out with. He says, people have speculated that I have partners or investors, which I don't know how that rumor got started. This line is fully self-funded. Every single dollar that has gone into the brand has been from my personal savings and checking accounts. I have no investors, no partners, no billion dollar backers behind me. So it seems like he's really taking a chance on this makeup release and he's trying to gain back some of that notoriety that he lost two years ago. Neither of us knows how it will go due to the murky nature of cancel culture and its crisscrossing tripwires of implied and loosely enforced rules. I hate the way this person writes. And because of a hungry and fickle internet that doles out forgiveness, or maybe just forgetfulness, seemingly at whim, it's a landscape, hellscape some would say, in which all comebacks are tentative and where the conversation around an offense often ends up obscuring the offense itself. I mean, what are you trying to say here, that he's innocent? When I polled friends and colleagues about Charles in the run-up to this day, the general consensus was that he had done something bad, but no one was clear on exactly what. I mean, I would say it's pretty clear and documented what this guy did. He was being absolutely thirsty on the timeline, and was not verifying age while doing so, it's pretty simple. Charles first went viral in 2016 after he brought in a ring light and used glossy highlighter to accentuate his cheekbones for his high school yearbook photo. Suddenly, he was everywhere. The first male spokesperson for CoverGirl, a guest on Ellen, he did a commercial with Katy Perry, filmed with the Kardashians, and posted a YouTube reality competition show amply titled Instant Influencer. The combination of his fresh-faced, youthful earnestness and bold, maximalist aesthetic made him one of the most financially successful beauty YouTubers of all time, with a rumored annual income of more than $10 million in 2020. Yeah, I mean, at one point, James was popping like a big fat pimple on picture day. It seemed like this guy could do no wrong. He was absolutely everywhere, getting the biggest brand deals with Starbucks, with Target, and his makeup was out here selling like McDonald's hotcakes. In a corner of the internet known for constant sniping, backstabbing, and hopelessly convulted rivalries, the same lack of gill and perma-logged on status that drew viewers to Charles also made him a magnet for drama. I like how she's trying to paint this out like people were exaggerating these stories. There he was, posting regular apologies for things like insensitive tweets about Africa and Ebola, or for asking Shawn Mendes to juggle me like that. Charles developed a reputation for a kind of over-the-top thirstiness. I mean, yeah, this guy was more than thirsty. He needed to be quenched. A quality that could be interpreted as freshly candid or slightly cringe. Yeah, I don't think anyone saw his extreme thirst as refreshingly candid. I mean, let's be honest, if a straight man was out here acting that thirsty on the timeline, he would get burnt on a stake. His drama gay opponent initially accused Charles of using his fame to manipulate straight men. True to influencer form, she retracted the claim and apologized a year later. Yet all this drama seemed to ultimately earn him one thing, more followers. At his peak, Charles had nearly 26 million YouTube subscribers, on tops of tens of millions more on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, I mean, at first when he would be involved in drama, it really only made him stronger. It really only made him more well-known. But once you start messing around with the type of allegations he had levied against himself, that type of drama is never a good look. In February of 2021, at age 21, Charles confronted a career crisis he couldn't quickly apologize for or capitalize on. He was publicly accused of sending photographs and inappropriate messages to a then 16 year old fan. Charles said he was misled into believing the boy was 18 and that he blocked him as soon as he learned the truth. I've never been more disgusted in my life than when I found out that that kid was 16 years old. I mean he was the one out here who wasn't doing an ID check after mindlessly scrolling around on TikTok and Instagram looking for a new boyfriend. Charles says now that he was absolutely mortified. The allegation triggered more complaints against Charles, talking about those 15 other guys. They were primarily decimated in the form of TikToks filled with screenshots of flirtatious conversations Charles had allegedly conducted with a number of male fans. A few of the reported accusations, like the initial one, were serious and claimed to detail inappropriate online interactions between Charles and other claims, including an incident in which Charles allegedly called someone daddy, felt muddier. Almost all of them were eventually rounded up into viral Twitter threads by a controversial poster who keeps track of internet scandals. Now went to fire himself. Who is this, Def Noodles? Yep, the nail meets the head. It was Def Noodles. And you notice how the writer of this interview is continuously trying to discredit the people who spoke out against James? Just another picture of him chilling in his mansion 
probably scrolling on Instagram looking for the next guy to creep on. In the end, substantiated or not, multiple media reports indicated that at least 15 boys and men had accused Charles of inappropriate behavior. Charles says now that the breadth of the allegations, the source of where the list came from was not doing any sort of research, no fact checking, I'm guessing he's talking about deaf noodles there. Some of the screenshots depicted consensual conversations between adults, he says. Others were completely fake and never happened. Nevertheless, that April, Charles uploaded a 14-minute YouTube video called Holding Myself Accountable, where he admitted to inadvertently exchanging messages with two 16-year-old boys he said he was led to believe were 18. And he apologized for his desperate behavior. Oh, I absolutely did f*** up, he says, but he denies that he ever engaged in Charles continued, I feel like that word is a very popular buzzword right now, especially in politics and stuff, but the actual meaning of it has been so misconstrued. I mean, no matter what way you want to put it, you were sending crazy stuff to a 16 year old when you were in your early 20s, my boy. His apology, one in a begrudging and much mocked genre of YouTube influencer, me culpas, was full throttled but it did nothing to quell the fur. I'm serious, is this chick writing this for like, an English paper? What the f***? After years of benefiting from online controversies, Charles has officially become too toxic for the internet. His YouTube page was demonetized, I'm sure it's remonetized at this point, probably after a couple of months. He had now returned as the host of Instant Influencers You Don't Say, and his other business ventures languished. He and Morphe, an influencer-focused beauty brand with which he'd partnered on an eyeshadow palette and brushes, cut ties. Charles' team says this was done at their own request after they saw Morphe getting backlash for associating with Charles. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, I don't think that makeup palette was selling very well after this story came out. Charles told me he pocketed a small amount from the deal that allowed him to buy his house, a small amount is a $7 million house, I guess, and pay off his parents' mortgage. And then they're saying that overall, one estimate put his total loss of income in the millions. And I do believe that, like I said, just in the ad revenue he lost, it must have been hundreds of thousands to not millions of dollars. And he did have all these major brand deals that he lost from Starbucks, from Target. I think even like Cinnabon was getting in on the action. I can't even begin to explain to you how bad that week of my life was. I was crying myself to sleep every night. I was sitting there in my bed staring at my phone. I wanted to self-delete. I wasn't talking to anybody. I think I've always been somebody who's been able to cope, he continues. I've been able to turn off my phone, to go see my family, to have friends over, to go to an escape room, watch a fun movie, play Mario Kart, play Minecraft, build a Lego set. You see how they're trying to like humanize him? With this situation, it was really scary because my coping mechanisms weren't coping. And he basically says it was the first time that he didn't know what to do. And this detail is the craziest to me. The fallout became deeply personal when his younger brother, who works as a model in New York City, stopped talking to him because of these allegations. It's now been two years since they last spoke, Charles says. And to me, that's actually the craziest part of this entire article is the fact that at this point, someone very close to him in his family, his own brother, has chosen to disown him for the last two years. I mean, all I'm saying is when even your own flesh and blood does not believe you, to me, that's just not a very good sign. Can I get a W brother down below in the comments? In the summer of 2021, Charles prepared a comeback video, a 30 minute YouTube post titled An Open Conversation, which began with the acknowledgement that it would be ridiculous and irresponsible to try and just come back to social media and pretend like nothing happened. They say it quickly became YouTube's most disliked video of the week, although it's been watched more than 6 million times to date. Well yeah, a video has to be watched a lot of times to be the most disliked, it's kinda just common sense. His next post about a TikTok cookie trend was only the third most disliked video of the week, driven by what armchair therapists diagnose as a compulsive need for online interactions. So yeah, she's basically just trying to discredit pretty much any of his detractors. Just another picture of him, he actually looks really creepy in this iPhone shot. They talk about when James first got a star on the internet. He says we liked each other's blogs and would talk back and forth in Skype call on school nights. When he was 13, he traveled to New York City to meet the girlies he'd met on the internet. Yeah, it sounds like a very normal thing for somebody to do. Romantic relationships would become a whole other challenge, one that ultimately led to the incidents, he said. Why do they always say the incidents? It's like the same thing with EDP. He was calling it the incident. Let's just call it what it actually was. You were creepy. 
They basically say that he had a hard time finding love out here in these celebrity streets. They say the internet became his avenue for this exploration. So he started using TikToks for you and Instagram's explore pages as dating apps, as many people his age do. Is that really true though? Are people out here like scrolling on their Instagram feed just trying to find a relationship? His biggest mistake he thinks now were making himself too available and recklessly hitting on anyone he thought might be showing him interest. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a hopeless romantic who's ironic never found love. But let's not deviate from the real problem here, that he couldn't recognize that these people he was trying to talk to in a romantic manner were not of an appropriate age. I know, you know, and he knows that Charles is on a mission to rehabilitate his reputation. I don't think that's ever going to happen. But, and even though we've already established he's very good at his job, I have to tell you that his regret doesn't come across in person as the opportunistic artifice so many celebrities begrudgingly wade through. It's more that he just seems young. So yeah, she's throwing him so much bail. He's more cautious now, although not so much that he's given up on the DM sliding completely. Oh yeah, I'm sure this guy is still thirsty as ever. I mean, we've seen examples of it recently with his boyfriend requirements and that whole saga. Instead, he started requiring potential romantic interest to provide IDs before he'll engage. I'm like a club bouncer at this point, he says, which even still hasn't stopped the occasional breach of trust. Earlier this year, a TikTok user shared snippets of a flirtatious conversation he had with Charles, in which James outlines his requirements for a boyfriend. Charles also tells me he recently caught a 17 year old trying to lie about his age by taking a digit out of his ID. I mean, dude, why are you still talking to people who look even close to being not 18? I mean, I'm 26 years old at this point, and I think I have a pretty good grasp when I just see like the general person, whether or not they're 18 or above. And the fact that he still almost got tricked by a 17 year old is a terrible look. Like, why would you admit to that? More than anything, Charles seems focused on his goal, which is really to reclaim his spot in the cultural mainstream. Yeah, it's never gonna happen. I see a lot of young people saying, oh my God, nothing ever happened to him. He got away with this scot-free with no sort of repercussions. Well, yeah, he never went to jail. He says, that is so far from the truth. It certainly wasn't an overnight thing where now I'm slaying again. I mean, dude, you're sitting in a mansion talking about, oh, I don't want to be canceled anymore. You're not canceled. He then says that people shouldn't be canceled for making one mistake. And in general, they're usually not. But when they make the same mistake you did, in my opinion, there should really be no comeback from that type of thing. In our own messy and perfect way, maybe we're starting to calibrate our responses to the severity of an offender's offense. Maybe we've arrived at the point where we're doling out appropriate levels of social censor. Or maybe we're just tired of keeping score and ready to succumb to the path of least resistance, letting our feeds figure it out for us. I do have to say, this is one of the worst written articles I've ever had the displeasure of covering. I really don't like the way she was trying trying to throw James Bale at every single turn. And I just hate her writing style in general. She's trying to throw out all these big words. It just really makes me cringe. But y'all let me know what you guys think about this down below. What is your verdict? Is James guilty? Is he innocent? As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like and subscribing. I don't think he'll ever be the same. I don't think he'll be some sort of comeback story. But as you guys know, it's been your boy, the Terrence Superman. And some other weirdos out here need to be covered. So I'm out. Peace.